Uh, basically, this is part of the military display that Simon owns. Uh, so we've got the Plessy Vixen. The mast is probably about three quarters of the way up, but we've had a problem with the compressor. The air compressor we've tried two now, uh, so we're hoping to get a third one. But uh, um, it's um, trying to rely on commercial compressors hasn't helped very much. If you put too much pressure in them, they, the seals won't, they don't like it. You, okay, you've yeah. got to give them the respect they deserve. Yeah. Mike Zero, Sierra Zulu Tango. Yeah, Mexico Zero, sure. It's handed me a, a nice cup of coffee, you can't go wrong. <laughs> Hi Dave. Morning. Morning. You're a busy man. Good Sorry. morning. <laughs> We're having a look see how active the bands are. It's basically a restoration of Plessy Vixen based on RB44 as a uh, transport vehicle. Uh, there was a few of these that were actually put into trial and service with the Royal Six. Um, there was a bit of a fallout between the government and the uh, and Plessy. Unfortunately, it probably only lasted a few months uh, of trial and due to budget costs and going beyond contract it, it was all written off um what we've actually done it's been hard work trying to find all the kit and, and some of it is very difficult to acquire um we have first of all a complete plessy vixen rack now this includes the intercom assembly it includes the audio and switching for headset and remote speaker we have the video unit we also have Probably a few of you guys are familiar with the Watkins Johnson unit. Uh, by using IF, that can actually manage up to three separate individual receivers. We have below a timestamp unit, um, and then followed by the Raycall data and voice record system. Now, the manual position below is the operator position, and this would have been used for selecting frequencies directly. Now. It's no good me sitting here and telling you about it because it is a working exhibit. So what we'll do is we will power up, hit the breaker for the distribution box on this rack. Right, so the minute we've powered up, we have an hour meter indicating we have power on the main distribution panel. And first of all, what we're gonna do is fire up the, now this may not be the textbook sequence, but it's as near as I can get it at the moment according to the manuals I've got. So. First we switch on the RX and then we switch on the control head and this will go through a self-test with the receiver itself. Okay, so we now have that powered up and online. There, there is a demonstration video on my YouTube channel uh, showing and demonstrating me actually tuning into this as well. I'll put the link um, yeah. up there. Okay, we power up the VDU and the VDU powers up. Ask us to hit the home key and the terminal is now ready. Uh, whether any of you guys have any information on this or anybody has experience of using the panel, um, at the moment that's as far as we've got with firmware and programming from the panel to the Watkins Johnson unit and the receivers. Still a, a big learning curve on this. So. Uh, Okay, so we've got the video powered up. We have the main control head powered up. We then power up the tape system. As you can see, the tape system comes into life. And we then have the timestamp unit and that now powers up. Uh, the Watkins Johnson unit, we have a, we repaired it once. We seem to have a problem with the power supply again, just due to the age of the components. So that's something else that has to be looked at. Um, so I won't power that up but we'll go to the AUGS power, which will now power up the amplifier and the speaker. So obviously you can hear the hiss, we'll turn that down a little bit. Um, just a, a quick go run through on this. The data record, voice record system uses a very basic cassette. You can see in there, some of you will be familiar with those from the, uh, the 80s and 90s. <laughs> Like most children now, if you told them a cassette, they wouldn't yeah. know what it is. So, um, but moving back to the the 
just knock that off quick. To the second rack, um, we're still really looking for a head unit. We have all the other kit, the receivers, and the necessary kit within the rack. But what we've done is adapted it to make it a little bit more purposeful when we're out on shows and field events. So we have the 857D, which is custom mounted in the top of the rack where the Watkins Johnson unit would go. Um, that has been bracketed into the original fitting and slide for the Watkins Johnson so we can easily remove it and replace it or put it back to its original configuration. Below we have the 450. It's just the 450 uh, FT450 with the, the additional tuner, it's, it's not the D. Um, and this, this works very well with helping us on HF. Um, they, it's quite a nice combination to have to make us flexible with others and, and obviously being able to use the radio. Um, I know Dave's been enjoying himself on the, on the racks over the weekend. So <laughs> <laughs> um, We also have the, uh, the modem utility at the top here, which is um, designed to, to get communications back from the, the racks to uh, command. Uh, that's, there's options for uh, copper or fiber, um, however it would have been used. Um, now the the other component which sort of we're all very familiar with is the comms component the guys here actually been able to talk to uh, the command and, and that's taken care of with a comms rack which is in the back of the unit here by the door now this particular radio is uh, belongs to a friend of mine and it is the Jaguar unit uh, frequency hopping uh, VHF unit um, normally here we would have probably, um, I would probably say a 321 uh, HF vehicle set, VRC321, and next to it um, possibly it would be a bid 460 for voice encryption, decryption and security. Um, there is a unit I know that sits in here which is part of the data security for the system as well. But I've not been able to acquire or find one of those or any details about it. Um, but this would have been the, the comms point. The rest is eavesdropping. Um, this was jamming as well, as you say. No, it, it's not. Uh, it, it's just a standard feature of the Jaguar. Uh, okay. And that is the frequency hopping and, and white noise. Right. And, oh, okay. um, at the moment, we've got a, a multiple uh, charger there for charging the the batteries in some of the portable units. It, it's, a, it's a lifelong passion, it's something I've always loved and I think the thing that started it was when I was a kid I always just go around the shows and see all the FFR Land Rovers and the fascination then with electronics, I was opening toolboxes and I should have say antenna tuner boxes and tools were falling out Right, yeah. and <laughs> bits of knickknacks stored in them and I thought well you know I'd love to see this as it should be yeah 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 uh, i mean there are lots of other guys out there that do it don't get me wrong the, the amount of work they put into it so uh we started off i think the first vehicle i ever started putting radio into was in an alba stalwart and it was my first larkspur c13 set right and i had so much enjoyment finding the the bracketry and the original mountings and the, the way it was it was mounted and the comm sets um, it just got very addictive from there. Um, we then moved on to collecting more radios. <laughs> I've always had lots of military radios. Um, I but managed to, to find an FFR Land Rover and, and we completely restored that to bare metal and completely rebuilt all the okay. electronics. Um, and a, a lot of people have probably seen my channels and that. I'm synonymous with the Sankey comms trailer and the Land Rover. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, with 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 the Vixen, was um, at what what point did you did you discover that you were actually in the middle of renovating the whole lot? Did you know from the um, beginning that you were going to do I knew, the whole lot? Yeah, I, I knew from the beginning. I was very reluctant to sell the Land Rover, and we moved forward. And, and there was a gentleman from Malta decided to buy all of my kit, but an Land Rover based kit. And I'd seen one or two of the RBs, and it's something I just always fancied because it was a limited edition. There was a lot of bad rumours about what it did and didn't do and I just wanted to prove it wrong and say well look you know it, it is a good vehicle yeah the kit um, but but you were telling me that actually the the, the back unit is actually uh, modified to fit on the base of the 
RB. Yeah, the, originally the the Rebro unit was on the back of the RB. Right, that's what yeah. I saw before, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. On the previous video. Um, the... the trainer I found uh, through a radio friend of mine, which was the original trailer for the Plessy system. Uh, it was used basically. It was modified. It was used with the uh, the oh, civil defence system, the NCRS system. Um, but what I always wanted to do, inevitably, is to put the Plessy on the back of the truck. Now that came by. I spent over a year and a half searching for that. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. to no avail. And uh, I was with a friend on a showground one day. And he said, oh, I've got a storage unit in my farm. This was six miles down the road from where we live. <laughs> and we went down, he was using it as a canvas store, and it was a Plessy Vixen. It was absolutely Crikey. bare. But the, the reason why I wanted to do this is there's just so many people that have stripped them out for camper vans and, yeah. and for living accommodation, um, DX Explore, you know. Yeah. And I wanted to preserve the actual equipment so people could see it yeah 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 and as far as i was aware i've, I've never ever seen another vixen fully restored and working in its correct environment Crikey. so we spent two three years restoring uh we had to redesign the mounting system to get the vixen on the back of here um i approached a, a specialist engineer to do all the work for me um the original skid system has been retained and it's using a interlock system using neoprene gasketing uh, there's uh, it's been designed to give a, a electrolytic conductance make sure that there's no reaction between aluminium and metal yeah, yeah. Uh, it's all been done properly um, and we, we got the unit completed just before lockdown uh, we've done we completed one or two shows with it um, into lockdown suddenly people started ringing me saying I believe that you're after Vixen kit and I had loads of people helping out and I'd just like to say thanks to anybody who's donated and helped with kit. Um, it's been absolutely brilliant and, and we finally managed during lockdown to acquire the kit, get it on the bench during lockdown, get it all working yeah. and we've redesigned all the racking and all the benching and to as original as we can do with pictures um, and the whole thing as you've seen is, is now up and running. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's, my passion really is just to preserve this kit and to help others that are interested in it. Well, we've had lots of visitors so far. Um, you can probably hear all of the, all of the uh, cars racing. It's um, very active today. And hopefully we'll get some radio on the go. I'm using the, uh, we've got the Cougar on the go at the moment. So we, we're getting a few, uh, you know, a few bits of radio going. And so hopefully I'll bring you back in Hopefully, when when the red, when the antenna is fully um, fully placed up, and uh, try we'll try some HF radio. Oh, it's so much fun here. Car show. Frank Zero Sierra Zulu Tango Portable Three Zero NRL. Keep this short because um, we have lots of um, uh, lots of uh, cars whizzing around, and we've got to quite a member, quite a number of people around the display. So I'll uh, I'll keep this one short. But you sound about a five one five two. There's no uh, meter on this uh, Cougar radio. So it's an air, com air compressor? It's just uh, normally the system would be um, elevated using a Clark 24 volt compressor mounted in a, a steel case in the rear of the unit. Okay. The other option, which most radio amateurs will probably be familiar with, with the SCAM 12 Clark mast, uh, is a stirrup pump. Right. Uh, that's quite a big stirrup pump, that's so high and actually physically pumping the master. Oh, crikey. <laughs> um, it, it's not that bad. Right. Um, but it's, uh, they're very prone to seals, seal failure, jamming. They don't like a, a lot of side friction. Uh, so it's, they're probably best put up with a reasonable wind or no wind. Okay, yeah. Um, and it just uses uh, a bayonet type coupling here. We put that into the bottom of the mask and uh, quite literally blow the mast up. Right. Um, well, it's inflating. It's a nice steady compressor. It's set at low pressure. As the mast goes up, I will lock the collars off as each section goes up. Yep. So uh, we're, we're about, with the elevation on the back of the truck, probably about 42 feet elevation to the top of the mast. Okay. And we've got to be careful of the wind load on it. Yeah, it's, it's not too bad, actually. We should be all right okay. today, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, they can be a bit awkward to get down if you've got a lot of side pressure from wind. Okay. Right. The mast is probably about three quarters of the way up, but we've had a problem with the compressor. The air compressor we've tried two now, uh, so we're hoping to get a third one. But uh, um, it's um, trying to rely on commercial compressors hasn't helped very much. Slowly, slowly, nice. Yeah, they just. They is that catching there on that hook? No, it'll be fine. So I'm keeping an eye on all these. Yeah. If you put too much pressure in them, they, the seals won't, they don't like it. You've, okay, you've yeah. You've got to give them the respect they deserve. Yeah. Cool linear's working well, I'll try, sorry, the tri band's working well. It'll be even better when it's 12 metres yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do the valves then? Yeah, lock the collars. So we we only want the two at the upper sections to go first. Oh so. yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, and then do one at a time. Because of the width at the, the the very bottom section, because of the volume, there's more pressure on it. So yeah. Okay, Dave. <laughs> Put too much pressure in them. They, the seals won't. They don't like it. You've, okay, you've yeah. Got to give them the respect they deserve. Yeah. handed me a, a nice cup of coffee you can't go wrong <laughs> yeah but uh, hopefully we'll catch up with you at some point and uh, get a decent qso in but do go and have a look at the website if you have a look at uh, militaryradio.co.uk and follow the relevant links and or give me a shout through email or whichever and uh, we'll catch up again fairly soon yeah, Mexico Zero, Sugar Zulu Tango. Yeah, Sierra Zulu Tango, Tango Tango. 317, Delta Lima 3, Fox Charlie Gold. Sierra Delta Lima 3, Fox Charlie Gold, 59136, Europe 171.